Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show, but most importantly, I hope you're learning a lot about differentiation from first principles. There are other techniques or methods that you can use to find a derivative, but you will always be asked to demonstrate your ability to differentiate using the first principles. It's also called differentiation um, by using, uh, by from definition. Yes, it's also called differentiation from definition, but we also use the word first principles. So you need to know how to do it. There are shortcuts, but you can't go over them. You also need to know how to use the first principle formula to find the derivatives. We're now going to go to our last question of the show, which is a very interesting question. In fact, if it, if it was by me, I would say this is the hardest of all the first principle questions you can ever get. We do ask you to differentiate a constant, a linear function, a quadratic function like Julian was doing. We also ask you to do a cubic. But the one we're going to use now is a question that involves a fraction where x is a denominator. So let's go and see what actually the question looks like. It says to us, differentiate using first principles, f of x equals negative 2 over x. Okay, cool. Now, before we even go anywhere, I'm sure by now you know that once we say you must derive by first principles, you're going to use the formula for first principles, which says what? Which says... Write the derivative, right? The derivative equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, everything divided by h. I think by now we all know that this is the formula we are going to use. And always remember that this thing is actually asking you to just work out the gradient. It's one of the most important things I can ever ask you to remember because it's very important. So for me to be able to work this out, I'm going to first of all figure out what f of x plus h is because we already know that f of x is given. That part is given there. We're just going to substitute it there. So I'm worried about finding f of x plus h. So f of x plus h equals to negative 2 divided by x plus h because what f of x plus h asks us to do is just to find um, the function when x becomes x plus h. So I have found those two and I'm now going to try and substitute them in my function and we will actually have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 divided by x plus h minus 2 divided by x. Now, I am not done substituting, I mean, replacing or rewriting what was written. There's that over h that we also need to take account of. However, I don't like taking fractions too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that divide by h right at the bottom and put it on a side using the division sign so that it becomes less hectic for me and it doesn't become too complicated. So I'm going to say this divided by h. Let's see now what will happen. Now, if I try to simplify this, I know you guys struggle a lot with fractions, so I'm actually going to introduce you to something very important that I always do when I'm adding or subtracting fractions. When I have A over B plus C over D, what I simply do is, I'm just going to say, okay, um, take the lowest, the denominator here, your denominator B and D, I will just take them and write them here, B and D, and then cross multiply, you'll get A, D, and then cross multiply, you'll get BC. That actually always helps me to um, add or subtract my fractions. And I can see we have a fraction here, and I know you guys hate fractions a lot. I'm also one of those people, so I came up with that idea. It actually always helps me. So my denominators there are X plus H and X, so I'm gonna keep them there as X plus H as well as X, and then I'm gonna mul multiply this one times that, will give us negative 2x. This one times across now is going to be negative 2 into x plus h, right? Everything divided by h, right? Which is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Let's simplify here. Negative 2x, when you multiply yourself in, you'll get negative 2x, negative 2h, all over x plus h into x. Right, now I'm going to change the division line to multiplication. Remember, h is actually h over 1. And when you change division to multiplication, t pen times. It's going to be t pen times. It's going to be 1 over h now. So it's going to be 1 over h. Let's see what will happen if we simplify this further. Um, we are going, we're now going to be looking at the limit as h approaches 0. Now, this 2x will delete this 2x. Right, let's see why this is not happening. Well, uh, it's negative. Okay, this is negative 2 actually. 
times x, which is going to be, um, okay, we missed a minus somewhere. Let's see what happened there. Right, oh, negative of a negative. Remember there was this negative here, this negative. Right, times the negative of f of x. We forgot it here. The negative of f of x that was supposed to be here will turn this into a positive. And then we're actually going to be sitting with a positive there. This is going to be positive, so these two can actually cancel each other. We're left with negative 2h all over this. And then eventually this h will cancel that h, leaving us on the numerator with negative 2 divided by x plus h into x, which will eventually become um, negative 2 all over. We can now save to replace our h as 0, x plus 0 times x which when you simplify further, you will actually end up with negative 2 over x times x, which is x squared. So this is very powerful. Always keep in mind that your signs are very important. You see, we almost made a mistake there with the negative sign. Always put your substitutions in brackets to avoid being uh, troubled by the negatives because negative of a negative is supposed to change and become a positive. So this is going to be very important. Let's go back and try to fix the mistake. Of course, if I do negative there, this is going to be a positive. When you multiply, it's going to be 2x. And when you multiply here, this one is also going to be positive. Let's fix that. This is going to be positive 2h. And this is going to be positive. And if you simplify further, it will be positive. And our final answer is going to be positive 2 over x squared. So you see, we also make mistakes sometimes if we are in a rush and you don't pay attention to your work. It's important for you to understand that if a question is out of two marks, you have about two minutes to do it. In fact, it's over two minutes that you have to work on the question. So always keep that in mind when you are doing these things. It's important for you to make sure that you take your science very seriously as well, and then you'll never at all make mistakes. So this was the hardest part of the first principle questions. I hope you saw how to work on it. Try it also on your own. It will help you to actually figure out and be confident with your differentiation by first principle. Now that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you very much for staying with us up to so far. We really enjoyed being with you. Uh, we hope to see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Do make sure that you send those questions on our Facebook and our WhatsApp. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.